Thank you very much. Thank you for handing over the floor to me. And um, my, uh, my profession is I'm at the University of uh, Applied Sciences in Rapperswil and teaching databases and geographic information systems. And um, my motto is open whatever, meaning open data, open source, and open access. So the ultimate, the ultimate goal of my presentation is, of course, to make OpenStreetMap even better and more well-known. And with this presentation, specifically, I would like to address a common questions uh, to OpenStreetMap and mappers. Is the quality of OpenStreetMap good enough? And the title of the lecture actually was, uh, above all, rather a teaser, but it has been actually uh, been asked before. The goals of the presentations are to show some weaknesses of OpenStreetMap, to present options and my recommendations, and to initiate a discussion after all before, and before all and uh, of, about those options and about my rec recommendations. Let me give a timer. So, where do these questions come from? An OpenStreetMap is a crowdsourced um, and virtual geographic information, and therefore it must be inhomogeneous, unreliable, and inconsistent. And now, what is a trust mark or a seal of, of approval? Um, a seal of approval is an image, a logo, a badge that indicates a product, either that a product either meets certain criteria or um, and, and is distributed by a professional organization. The trademark is intended to show that the product has been approved by a trustworthy third party. Customers gain confidence and are more inclined to use products that carry a trademark that is adapted from Wikipedia. Note, it can also be a fake question, and it actually is sometimes from users and skeptics all, of all kinds, uh, for example, due to a lack of understanding about OpenStreetMap and the clash of cultures of uh, the top-down um, official mapping, you know, with those white men if, if 100 years ago going to the wild um, Africa and uh, being the, the only professions who know everything and uh, versus, uh, so it's very much like the cathedral and the bazaar, when a, a clash of cultures. Uh, or do you, um, of a um, fear of a competition? Uh, is it also even loss of a monopoly? Or loss of control and loss of image um, of, our, of, the, of a profession like a cartographer or geodesist? Um, that's sometimes true, and, and in fact, there is a side uh, remark I want to, which comes into my mind. Is, is somebody here from EGN? Um, the EGN, um, and they, they have um, promoted, they are promoting Geo Commons. And if you meet uh, an, an EGN representative, listen to him what Geo Commons, what Geo Comma means. Um, it, it, it's uh, in, the, in a good um, direction what they are thinking of, of out of the box, not being the only one uh, who are mapping the world. So what we can say already, OpenStreetMap is not a professional organization in the, in the strict sense, not, um, of course, not uh, trying to make money. So um, it uh, is not applying to that. Sorry, uh, I will get used to this last. Um, so it is not applying to be um, a, a, a professional organization who wants to have a trademark. trademark. So let's concentrate to and if it's about a product that needs uh, and meets certain criteria. And, and, and I'm not aware of any trust, trustworthy third party in any way to give any trademark uh, to others regarding data. So, and, and, uh, and others they, uh, probably just don't need it because uh, the, the, the official organizations, the government, they don't need a trust mark. They, they, they are just, they are delivering good, good data, people think. So they don't need a, a good trademark. Um, and anyway, and uh, so what's, but what's data quality anyway? 
Um, data quality has been data quality um, has been defined many times ago. You know, in international uh, standardization uh, um, bodies, which I took part 20 years ago or, or something. It has been repeated all over the place, and uh, so it's a bit over engineered. So I always con try to concentrate on the on the most important quality aspects of uh, geospatial data, namely accuracy, second, tim timeliness, uh, third, completeness, fourth, reliability and logical consistency uh, regarding geometry um, or attribute um, uh, semantic consistency, and transparency, alignment, um, history, and, and how the data has been uh, processed. In the ISO, Standard, um, I mean, adopted by OGC or other way around, metadata has about 100 um, attributes, and, uh, and no wonder in Switzerland, no nobody ever filled out these 100 attributes so because even if I, we would have, uh, uh, I mean, forced them, it, it will never work. So, so what I always promoted is the um, Dublin Core from the um, from bibliography. Um, and Stack actually does a good job in just concentrating on, on the most important attributes of um, uh, describing a data set, which is more promising. And now, what, um, what this definition, which has been repeated so many times, what this definition lacks is that quality, quality criteria are fundamentally and generally unclear unless you introduce, introduce a purpose an area of use or an intended application, which is the term fit for use or fitness for use, which I always have to explain, even uh, educated um, geospatial engineers. And, uh, and this makes the criteria number zero um, before all uh, and above the five criteria I just enumerated before. And um, fitness for use also adds a seventh criteria, which is accessibility which also means that the data is understandable, which also will apply to OpenStreetMap. So then there is also in the open government the data world the, uh, and in open access in the research, the, the FAIR data. Um, and FAIR means findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable, which makes a bit uh, accessibility more um, understandable and more specific. And, and I'm just mentioning these are the, the important criteria of uh, quality, in my opinion. Now, in 21, I completed a study called Public Obviously Map Partnership, for short, the PUP study, study 21. And the goals have been to develop uh, recommendations on how public authorities can integrate OpenStreetMap into their open government data. And, and I now focus on this way because the other way has been another study in this so-called wishful thinking about a public on steep map uh, partnership. One chapter of my study shows options of, for what an authority can do to integrate on map data without having to adapt their, um, their own license or terms of use. Another chapter examined the issue of uh, data, of map data quality. And the last chapter contains recommendations, as I will show you just uh, the next slide. There is, this is public and can be downloaded over there. The study recommendations of two authorities are they should use OpenStreetMap data where it makes sense and it's allowed in even some and often, oftentimes without having to change their own license if they are aware, are aware of the options. Then the authorities should contact uh, the local association, uh, if they, uh, OpenStreetMap association, um, if they have any questions about the use of OSM awesome data. The authorities should clarify whether a commitment to of OSM is beneficial, beneficial for them, such as um, becoming a member of uh, OpenStreetMap. And they should develop internal competencies for OpenStreetMap and they should designate a central point of contact as they do, for example, for, for satellite images uh, or for European contacts. 
And the updated conclusion of the study was that uh, OBT BAMP has a unique selling point. I don't I can, I have to tell you all those. Um, uh, one of those are the routing network and the many point of, in, point of interest. It's more up to date than some, in some cases and, and more details than official data. It complements the official data in, op, in important aspects like point of interest and uh, the dozen data quality issues. There, there are issues, but it fits, it's fit for use and there are, uh, accessibility. there are quality issues. Fourth, and there um, are accessibility issues like uh, lack of um, user friendliness and awareness. And as a, per a personal note, the study did not, they did not get the, that attention, I hoped. Um, it has been partially ignored, so the cantons, um, and, and nevertheless, um, they, they didn't care about um, ODBL compatibility, and then and they made some CC non-commercial use, and now we have to somehow um, clean up the mess um, and, and, and for a while. And the study will be extended in uh, this and next year. So this is a real example of an OpenStreetMap metadata description of some student which used, uh, used in analysis the OpenStreetMap data by extracting parks. And, 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 and she wrote, um, that's the data set. Sorry. She, she wrote, that's the description after my uh, uh, recommendation with the, those, uh, those five plus uh, additional um, um, aspects of metadata, and uh, notably, she wrote um, it uh, accuracy not reliable, unclear. And I would rather uh, hope that uh, she would have uh, written uh, in general it's about five meters um, in, in in average. And uh, and then she wrote timeliness, um, just a download date, uh, implying that it's up to date, which is nice. Uh, I would rather have it more explicit, so have some real um, answer like last update of the data was last element was updated one hour ago, and the average update is about whatever ten days. But uh, but we need better tools, and the completeness um, she wrote it's not consistent. Um, I would say it uh, obviously has good topological consistency, but uh, the completeness um, has to be estimated with tools which need to be better. And so there are three critical aspects and that's the main first message of my talk. Um, uh, there are critical aspects of improvement um, of OpenStreetMap data in, in, in a neutral way. It's completeness, it's um, reliability, and it's um, accessibility. Now, one after the other um, in, in a rather um, now fast and uh, fast um, moving forward the completeness that's obvious and there are uh, that it, there are inhomogeneous um, complete um, management of data and there are tools like what the heck sorry sorry for this there are tools like awesome quality analyst uh, by Heidelberg um, colleagues of University of Heidelberg um, I did an obviously map point completeness research, um, which I'm showing just uh, in the next slide. And there are, of course, also projects which I summarized to promote validation completeness, including Street Complete and others. So that's the awesome um, quality analyst, uh, which is uh, quite a number of uh, measurements they propose. Um, I think it's a cloud service, but not open to the public. Um, and it's part of a mandated service for them to anyone who asks, like the, um, the BKG, the, the, the Topographic Institute of um, Germany. Um, this is my research, um, which tries to apply an intrinsic approach, given more than half of uh, important elements are already mapped. We have, have trained a neural network to forecast the potential completeness of any target feature like shops. And, and, and so, and, and then we are then applying, applying a, um, a classification saying if it's um, compared to the existing um, elements in, in OpenStreetMap, um, if it estimates about the same, it's uh, complete. And if it estimates only 
um, about half or uh, th three fourths. It's undermapped and um, heavy undermapped if it's below uh, the half of the elements um, which are existing as compared to the estimated amount of elements like shops um, in this in this case. And this gives a quantitative uh, number um, to be given to some specific purpose of a quality analysis. The second point is about the inconsistency, in inconsistency of uh, OpenStreetMap, where there are tools, actually too many tools um, pro proposing too many false, um, false uh, positives, which, which means we need more, uh, more exchange and sharing um, and storage of uh, what false positives are, which is lacking somehow, which I, where I mean, Osam Cha um, already checked, um, checked issues are not shared with other, with other um, um, reporting tools. And we somehow need to work more together on that one. And then uh, as a third point, that's Osam Cha. Um, which doesn't work in my case uh, for regional um, aspects, which is somehow uh, crazy. So what th that was uh, the reason why we implemented the lightweight implementation called obviously the monitoring tool, which is being released soon um, to the public. And uh, then the third point is accessibility, which was probably one of the reasons that the daylight map distribution has been made and also what overture maps data perhaps wants to do. So obviously map really could be more user friendly from the perspective of end users and software developers. It could have a unique identifier, which is part of accessibility, but not the one everybody thinks of um, as a big integer, which is um, just um, released by a central authority, but uh, rather like overpass permit ID has proposed. And then there, there are um, more use cases, there are use cases where there is more, sh more sharing needed like the learning material I, I have the feeling that Todd Osom and, uh, and, and, and others um, and, and, and the like, they, don't, they just do all, all everything on their own, not, not looking at what's already existing, like, uh, like open school maps. And, and that's my, my thoughts here. And, and so my discussion point in one of the last slides is, um, I always say OpenStreetMap is a gold mine with 1,001 points of uh, interest and well done routing, but it's not a honey well. You, just, you can't just drink OpenStreetMap data and use it right away in your map making and analysis. And so awesome data users should treat OpenStreetMap um, like raw data, for, like in a data warehouse. And my opinion, uh, in my opinion, uh, obviously map does not need a trust mark. Um, a trust mark in, uh, it even is some like something like similar, like the discussion of that. Uh, do parents need need a certificate for raising children? In, in, uh, is this even possible? I mean, it's it, it's wishful, but it would never be in makes making sense, and it's uh, uh, neither possible. And, but in fact, it, 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 it came to my mind, what about the certificate for OpenStreetMap data consumers? And in fact, um, the statistical, uh, statistical authorities have a long experience in explaining how to use their data, so probably can learn from them. So my conclusion is the quality of OpenStreetMap data is good enough. And, and so when you speak about quality, just point that it's about fit for use, uh, fit for a purpose, and, and it should be fair. And obviously map doesn't need a trust mark, it's more uh, about uh, education and outreach. And, and, and still one last poll, who still thinks there is a need of a seal of approval after all? So have a talk afterwards, and who does think there, there is no need of a trademark? So and any others uh, are undecided. So at least OpenStreetMap has three improvement points. The completeness and the coverage, we need more and better tools 
to uh, make it more objective with quantitative estimates. We need reliability, a better logical consistency. Um, uh, also, with more and better tools, more and better cooperation and sharing, and probably also more guidance from the OSMF. And third, um, the accessibility needs to be better, more and better sharing um, of the learning material, more marketing, and perhaps a data consumer certificate. So that's um, my, my summary uh, of, of, of all. And um, as just the last poll, and, and, and like wanted to um, just take the time, who is in favor of uh, trying to introduce a data, obviously map data consumer certificate? Yes, just a few hands, which encourages me to think about this, because you know I'm I'm an educated, um, biased, and so that could be something we could think about and discuss afterwards, which is the main goal of my talk to discuss these things. And thanks for listening. Okay, while the ball or whatever cube gets to the first question, I have a quick uh, announcement. There will be a group picture at 1.30 in the bar, so after the lunch, uh, and everyone is expected slash invited to be there. 1.30 in the bar, I think that's, yeah, group photo. First question. I really did my best to be on time right now, so there was time for questions. So there better be questions. But otherwise, we can also ask a question to Oleg or uh, Sarah, if she's still here. Thanks. You raised a whole set of interesting points about the air quality. Um, considering the title of your talk, I was wondering if there was actually anyone making a case for a trustmark or trademark in the beginning? Like, did anyone actually ask for it? Because for me, trademark is something that's commercial, having done an internship in World Intellectual Property Organization, which is quite different than a trustmark of a collaborative project like that. And also, I just want to add a short comment regarding the data consumer certificate. I think there is a difference between data user and data consumer. I perceive consuming as something quite passive. You just consume it for your needs. Whereas, for example, my organization, Medicine Sans Frontières, is one of the big data users among the humanitarian mapping consortium of missing maps. And when you're a user, you use it actively and you contribute back. You, for example, upload the some data that you collect at the area of operation. And so you are also a data generator. So it's actually more complex than that. Thank you. Catching up the last question, I, that's, that's a typo. And, and I mean, that should be consumer. I agree with you. Uh, yeah. And, and that, that was user. But in fact, uh, in fact then that was correct uh, consumer um, certificate. And um, the, your first question, yes, there was actually one question in an in, in, in discussion in, in LinkedIn, which I didn't quote then here from somebody in Germany with a, with a professional background in, in geodesy or geography and from a government. And, and, and so, so and then and, and it's, it's really, it was really probably meant serious. Um, so somehow to push um, and, and on, on um, OpenStreetMap in this direction or or to, to make him uh, on the safe side um, as, as so that he can sell to his boss or, um, uh, um, who is skeptic um, to say, no, no, obviously map is okay be because it has a trust mark. That, and it was really um, at least one, um, one uh, citation I could give you. Yeah. And what was the, 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 second, the second question? That I think uh, user would be more, um, expressive than consumer. Consumer, it seems rather passive to me. Okay. 
agree on that. So I'm really uh, talking about data consumer. And, and actually, that I mean, that was also what I really had in mind with my title, um, does it um, need a, a, a trust mark? It came from, from a mapping government agency, um, um, this question. Or, or transport or some geospatial related um, the data consumer um, who needed the, the open street map for, for routing. And it was re really in, in, this, in this domain. I just wanted to uh, make a remark that that is this tangential related topic about trust marks and uh, data consumer certification. There's, we had, this was at the last state of the map, I think we had this discussion about hiking trails. And one of the issues that we have is that we're not the open, we're not the face of open street map to your average consumer. So people take OSM data and they produce products out of it. And what we don't have is a quality assessment mark or whatever for if they are actually doing something reasonable with OSM data. So in the case of hiking trails, um, ignoring access um, attributes and similar things. And I don't know how far they are, but the, the, there's a working group in for, of OSM US that has been working on um, that kind of stuff together with um, government um, organizations. And that is something that we probably should be doing as well. So having, yes, this, is, uh, this company actually produces maps or, or routing information based on best practices in OSM. And I think that is actually sorely um, missing because it's not just a, a, a question of the input data, it's what you do with it. I just, uh, as, a, as an unrelated remark, I had, while writing this, uh, this talk, I had some, um, I didn't emphasize this, so a proposal is, I'm trying out to be a mapper in residence at, at the organization. So in order to promote to, to somehow really try to implement uh, the recommendations I told you uh, so that uh, the, the, those recommendations I made for um, getting on zip map uh, knowledge better inside the, inside the, um, the organization. So one of those um, recommendations seems to be difficult for organizations to set uh, uh, such a thing up, but it happens slowly. Go for it. Go for it. I just take the mic so that people can hear it. So we have one question from the live stream, which I'm going to read out to you. Regarding OSM data quality, there seem to be a lot of people interested in mapping as creating new features, but there is few people doing editing as deleting, for example, forgotten overgrown paths. Is there any way to support this feature pruning? So the bottom line is that there are um, feature pruning, I mean cleansing, like, uh, or, or, vali uh, or, or cleaning up, or vali validating, and is that what I understand? Pardon? Yes, that's true. I mean, actually, that's, that's, that's very true, that it seems that, um, that we are still in the phase um, where people like adding new stuff before all, and, and then perhaps going to micro mapping, but uh, we now need to go into another phase where we have to maintain to, to maintain the the map and the data, which is um, probably in, for the in, for the in, in, an initial point of view less uh, sexy or attractive, 
but uh, that's the way we have we have to go in and to, to, to get more people cleaning up um, OSM nodes or um, to validate more than to just add the, the new new things. I mean, um, sometimes it's even still adding, in my opinion, if you add an opening hour, which is lacking, or if you add um, a wheelchair access or, or something, you are still you are still adding something. But the, uh, I mean, times are are gone in, in at least. In, in, in Europe, where you are more or less on, on a white on a white map, actually, and, and there are still places um, which have white maps, um, but um, we, we should now shift over to the phase to maintain the OpenStreetMap database. And the tools are uh, like gamification, and then um, I mentioned quickly, I, I'm doing a project of the month. Where, where, where we have just um, just for um, for honor and, and and nothing else to be ranked as the most active mapper to add opening hours, uh, for example. Okay, uh, before the final applause before lunch, I have one more question out of curiosity. Raise your hand if you're kind of alone at this conference. If you didn't come with anyone you know. Okay, and raise your hand if you're here to meet new people. Okay, good. Enjoy lunch, go meet each other, and a final applause for Stefan Keller, please. <laughs>